Protecting your character is a must in Daisy, right? The objective is to survive after all and well, wearing armour is a good way of going about this, but how do they all perform? Well, this is a question I've been asked ever since my best gun videos, so let's get to the bottom of this. Using Daisy tools we can extract the game files and get the exact values of each clothing item. Now we can ignore every item of clothing except vests and helmets as these are the only ones that provide armour protection against projectiles. Yes, contrary to popular belief, the leather jacket does not provide any projectile protection. Having said these, most clothes do protect against melee and infected attacks, but let's be honest, we're really just here for the protection against firearms. Let's start with the helmet. We have 11 unique helmets in DayZ. These can easily be categorised into three tiers, as many of them share similar values. So let's have a look at what I'm calling tier 1, the worst helmets if you must. Now don't get me wrong, all helmets are good, in fact every single helmet reduces projectile damage to the health by the same amount, which is 50%. Remember our player has a health stat, blood stat and shock stat. This 50% reduction is strictly for damage to the health. So to make that clear, yes a hockey helmet protects your health just as much as a tactical helmet. So you may be wondering, what actually sets these helmets apart? Well, for one, there's loads of other statistics that pick up an item of clothing. The big one being the hit points, it's how much health the item has until it ruins. They have a set health point, this tends to vary between either 500, 150, 27 and 15. When they reach below 70% of this health point, they become worn. When they reach below 50%, they become damaged. And when they reach below 30%, they become badly damaged. Finally, ruining at 0%. Once ruined, it will no longer protect you. Obviously, the more health points they have, the longer they take to reach the ruined state, therefore protecting you for longer. We want to find the item which has the highest damage reduction, but also the highest health points, so it can take multiple shots. So yes, why the hockey helmet is just as good as a tactical helmet in terms of one shot, the tactical helmet is going to last longer and protect you more from multiple shots. So let me quickly go over the unique statistics for each item. The 5 tier 1 helmets are as follows. The construction helmet weighing in at 0.47kg, having an item size of 4x3, 0 absorbency which makes it waterproof and this is true to all helmets so I won't mention it again. Finally it has a 0.3 heat isolation. Next we have the dirt bike helmet which weighs in at 1.6kg, has an item size of 4x3 and a heat isolation of 1. We then have the skate helmet which weighs in at 0.46kg, has an item size of 4x3 and a heat isolation of 015 we then have the motorbike helmet, a really interesting one as this one actually provides biological protection with a 75% reduction, I'm guessing that this is against diseases such as the flu. The motorbike helmet weighs in at 1.12 kilograms, has an item size of 4x4 and a heat isolation of 1. Finally, for our tier 1 helmets, we have the hockey helmet, which weighs in at 0.16 kilograms, has a 4x3 item size and a heat isolation of 0.4. The following statistics are true for all tier 1 helmets. As I mentioned before, all tier 1 helmets have reduced projectile damage to the player's health by 50%, the big thing here being they only have 15 health points. This means that they are very unlikely to be able to take another bullet. They also reduce all projectile shock damage to your character by 50%. This is really important as the last thing you want to do is fall unconscious during a fight. Next we have a 25% reduction to melee damage to the health as well as a 25% reduction to melee shock damage. Yet again we have a 25% reduction to both infected health damage and infected shock damage. Finally we have a 50% reduction to both explosive health and shock damage. So let's move on to the tier 2 helmets. First we have the pilot helmet weighing in at 1.45 kilograms with an item size of 4x4 and a heat isolation of 1. Next we have the fire helmet weighing in at 0.87kg with an item size of 4x3 and a gain with a heat isolation of 1. We then have the great helm, the heaviest on the list at 2kg with an item size of 4x4 and a heat isolation of 0. Similar to the motorbike, the great helm also provides a biological protection with a 75% reduction. Finally on our tier 2 list we have the combat helmet weighing in at 1.5kg with an item size of 4x3. 
All tier 2 helmets provide the same protection statistics. Like all helmets, they have a 50% reduction to projectile health damage. In this case, for the 4 tier 2 helmets, they have 27 hit points, making it more likely for them to protect you from multiple rounds depending on the calibre. Similar to the tier 1 helmets, they have a 50% reduction to projectile shock damage. What really sets the tier 2 helmets out from the tier 1 is the melee and infected protection. The tier 2 helmets provide a 50% reduction to the melee health damage as well as a 50% reduction to the melee shock damage. It also provides a 50% reduction to infected health damage and a 50% reduction to infected shock damage. Similar to the tier 1 helmets, the tier 2 helmets also have a 50% reduction to explosive health damage and a 50% reduction to explosive shock damage. Finally, we move on to the tier 3 helmets, the best if you must say so. First we have the Assault Helmet, commonly known as the Gorka Helmet. Now there's lots of myths surrounding this helmet, but it is in fact no better than any other of the tier 3 helmets. The Assault Helmet weighs in at 1.1kg, has a 4x4 item size and a heat isolation of 1. You can also attach a visor to this helmet. The other 3 tier 3 helmets are identical, both the Ballistic Helmet and Tactical Helmet are the same. However, there's a slight difference with the Ballistic UN helmet. For some bizarre reason, it weighs 20 grams less, coming in at 0.98 kilograms. The standard Ballistic and Tactical helmet weigh in at 1 kilogram. All three helmets have an item size of 4x3 and a heat isolation of 0.13. The following statistics are true for all Tier 3 helmets. That being they have 50 health points, meaning they are the best helmets for protecting you against multiple rounds as they take longer to ruin. I'm going to say this again, but like all helmets in Daisy, they have a 50% reduction to projectile health damage. The great thing about tier 3 helmets is that they have a 74% reduction to projectile shock damage, which is a considerable amount. As well as that, they have a 75% reduction to the following damage types. Melee health damage, melee shock damage, infected health damage, and infected shock damage. Like all other helmets, they have a 50% reduction to explosive health damage, however, they do have a 74% reduction to explosive shock damage. That's currently all our helmets in the game. In conclusion, all the helmets are very good. Do not skip over one because it doesn't match your style. Just because I labelled it as a tier 1 helmet doesn't mean that it's inadequate. Like I said multiple times, they all reduce projectile health damage by 50%. And I keep mentioning this because I find it very hard to believe, but sadly, that's the state of the game. And the following best statistics are even more shocking. The, what if I told you that when shot in a chest once wearing a stab vest, it is just as good as a plate carrier. In fact, the stab vest actually does a better job at protecting you against bullets and explosions than knives. Weird right, but don't shoot a messenger, I'm just delivering you the facts. So let's analyse these vests. And I haven't really categorised them into tiers as it's not really possible, instead we're going to go for a useless and useful category. So what vests are useless, what vests should I be avoiding? The first one and the most obvious being the Smurfs Rest, weighing in at 0.22kg with an item size of 3x3 and a cargo size of 6x5. Remember it allows for the addition of the Smurfs Backpack Attachment which then gives you an additional 6x5 storage. As well as that it has an absorbency of 0.3, remember absorbency is how much water it will absorb which can be quite handy to know as your gear does in fact get heavier when wet. Along with that it has a heat isolation of 0.2 and finally at 100 hit points, wherein the Smurfs vest will allow you an additional 3 quick bar slots. The next useless vest and it may be a surprise to some of you is the assault vest weighed in at 1.9kg with an item size of 3x3 and a cargo size of 6x5. It has an absorbency of 0.3 and a heat isolation of 0.2. Along with an incredible 500 health points, it's going to take some effort to ruin one of these. Again, wearing the assault vest will give you an additional free quick bar slot. The reason I categorise both the assault vest and smurfs vest as useless is the fact that they do not give any protection from any form of damage. They really aren't even armour at this point, but more just extra storage. The next useless vest is the hunting vest. Admittedly, this is not entirely useless as it does give a 10% reduction to melee health and melee shock damage, as well as a 10% reduction to infected health and infected shock damage. 
Now the really interesting thing about this vest is the fact that it reduces blood damage for melee and infect attacks by 10%, something we do not see in any other armor. The hunting vest weighs in at 0.35 kilograms with an item size of 3x2 by a cargo size of 6x4. It has an absorbency of 0.6, the most on the list, as well as a heat isolation of 0.5. Similar to the Assault Vest, it also has 500 health points, a really weird and unique vest and something I don't see too much of. So let's move on to the useful vests, the ones which will actually protect us. I'm going to start with the Stab Vest, because technically it is the worst, but do not get me wrong. This vest is, well, incredible, there's always been some stigma around this Stab Vest. And I never thought it was anything better than just some basic protection against melee attacks, but how wrong was I? See, the stab vest weighs in at 3.5 kilograms, with an item size of 3x2, but no cargo size. It has an absorbency of 0.1 and a heat isolation of 0.2. What really makes the stab vest the worst choice is the 30 hit points it has. So yes, while it has the same projectile protection as a plate carrier, it's more likely to ruin and therefore protect you from less shots. So the stab vest offers a 50% reduction to projectile health damage, a 50% reduction to projectile shock damage, a 25% reduction to both melee health damage and melee shock damage, making it one of the worst vests for melee protection. Something that really surprised me. It then offers a 25% reduction to both infected health and infected shock damage and finally a 50% reduction to explosive health and explosive shock damage. Our next vest is very similar to the stab vest, this vest being the high cap. In terms of protection, the high capacity shares the same statistics with the stab vest, so I won't go over them again. The only difference being the weight, as the high cap weighs in at 2.4 kilograms, has a 4x3 item size and a 7x5 cargo size. The rest of the stats are identical. The high cap offers an additional 3 quick bar slots. The next vest is something I've always been a fan of, and this is the press vest, weighing in at 7 kilograms with an item size of 3x2 and a cargo size of 6x4, with an absorbency of 1 and a heat isolation of 0.2. The vest has 50 health points and provides both projectile health damage and shock damage reduction of 50% as well as a 50% reduction to the rest of the following damages, so that's melee health damage, melee shock damage, infected health damage, infected shock damage, explosive health damage and explosive shock damage. The press vest offers an additional 2 quick bar slots. So finally we have the king of vests, the best of the best, the plate carrier weighs in at 12 kilograms. Has a 4x4 item size and allows for the attachments of a pistol holster and storage pouches. It has a 0.1 absorbency and a 0.1 heat isolation. The plate carrier has 100 health points and this is probably why you've experienced people tanking at multiple high caliber chest shots. What makes it different is the fact it has a 74% reduction to health shock damage as well as a 75% reduction to both melee health and melee shock damage and a 75% reduction to both infected health and infected shock damage. Finally, it has a 50% reduction to explosive health damage and a 74% reduction to explosive shock damage. So that's it for the statistics of armor in the game. I'm kind of disappointed to find out that they aren't more diverse. Just a quick strategy I thought up while making this guide was if you're worried about carrying too much weight, which does seem to be a problem when wearing a plate carrier, there's nothing stopping you from carrying at multiple high cap vests and swapping one out each time you get shot. Conclusion, do not underestimate the lower tier armour, there's no excuse to be skipping over a hockey helmet and stab vest now. Stay safe out there, this has been Rav, catch you in the next one.